Meghan Markle is officially pregnant, but don't think she's ready to kick up her heels for the next six months while the baby's in the oven. Until the next royal baby arrives, Meghan will have to follow a bunch of rules. Is she up for the challenge? She may have broken some rules already. Before we begin, subscribe to The Taco and make sure to like this video. Now, let's dive into the pregnancy rules Meghan Markle has to follow. No traveling abroad. Getting on flights and traveling around the world is part and parcel of a royal's duties. But when a royal falls pregnant, there are certain rules to follow. Reports say that traveling for pregnant royals should be kept to a minimum. This is for safety and health purposes, of course. While flying shouldn't be a problem for most women early on in their pregnancy, a royal usually stays close to home until the baby is born. That way, in case an emergency or health risk arises, they can easily get help. But Meghan Markle already broke this rule. When she announced her pregnancy, she had just landed in Australia. Despite already being three months pregnant, the couple isn't cutting their Australia tour short. They'll be jet-setting around the world for a while, which means this rule of limited travel is totally broken. No home births. For a long time, royals were born within the palace walls. But ever since Princess Anne gave birth to her children in St. Mary's Hospital, Paddington, it's become a royal tradition. Princess Diana gave birth to her sons in the private Linda wing of St. Mary's, and so did Kate Middleton. So despite current trends of home births, Meghan Markle will most likely have to check in at St. Mary's when the babies do. This is to make sure the baby arrives safely and to prevent any complications. It's also tradition to introduce the baby to the public on the steps of St. Mary's, where the baby will have its first photo op. No baby shower. Many Americans celebrate a pregnancy with a baby shower. The expectant mother is often showered with gifts that will help her welcome the new member of the family. Since Meghan Markle is now a part of the British royal family, she can forget about having a baby shower. While the baby shower trend is catching on in the UK, it hasn't made its way to the royal family just yet. Baby showers for royals also can come off as distasteful. These royals are more than capable of buying everything they need for their family. They'll receive a lot of backlash from the public if they expect to be given gifts at a baby shower. Gifts from friends and family are still received, but it seems Meghan will have to do most of the baby shopping, especially for essentials. Maternity leave Royals may not have typical jobs, but they're still working people. Meghan wasn't allowed to continue her work as an actress because she had to be a royal full-time. Her duties as a royal consist of representing the crown in events and working with charities. When Kate Middleton gave birth to her third child, Prince Louis, she took a five-month break from her royal duties. It's likely that Meghan will be given as much time as she needs after giving birth. The question is, will she take it? Meghan seems to enjoy filling up her schedule with work or trips out of town. She might carry on as usual even after having the baby. Maternity leave may be leaning towards mandatory for royals, but for Meghan, it could be just an option. Multiple baby names in America, it's common for people to only have one or two first names, and a popular trend among Hollywood celebrities is to have children with very unique and eccentric names. The Kardashians alone have a whole lineup of interesting names like Stormy, Saint, and Chicago. Before Meghan can flip through a baby book for a cool name, she'll have to keep in mind this certain rule. Royals usually have up to four first names. Most of them are names of former royals in the family tree or have some connection to the family history. Kate and Prince William's daughter, Princess Charlotte Elizabeth, Diana has a name that pays homage to Prince Charles, the Queen, and Princess Diana. The Queen, of course, has to give her blessing before a name is given. Perhaps with Meghan's baby, the Queen will be in the mood for a short and catchy name. No tracksuits or sweatpants Many women know how uncomfortable pregnancy can get. As the belly grows, it gets tougher to squeeze into a sensible pair of trousers. Towards the baby's due date, nothing sounds better than sloshing around in baggy sweatpants or stretchy tracksuit. But apparently, Meghan Markle doesn't have that luxury. As a pregnant royal, she can't stroll around doing errands in active wear, athleisure, or sweatpants. She'll still have to follow royal dress code when out and about. Maternity dresses are a go-to, especially for royal mum of three, Kate Middleton. But knowing Meghan's pants for dressing how she likes, which includes many pantsuits and trousers, we may be seeing a royal pregnancy tracksuit in a royal's wardrobe. No comfy shoes. Tracksuits, bottoms, and sweatpants hardly make up royal attire. But if you think Meghan Markle can go through her pregnancy in a pair of Ugg boots, think again. Despite the symptom of swollen feet that often accompanies pregnancy, royals still have to don sensible footwear. That means no showing of toes ever, and a good amount of heel is required for certain events. Just hours after giving birth, Kate Middleton was wearing a pair of kitten heels to appear in front of the public. Meghan is only a couple of months pregnant and isn't really showing much of a baby bump. She's still 
still wearing her sky-high heels when out conducting royal work. But Meghan does have a rebellious streak in her, especially when it comes to fashion and comfort. She may break this rule with no sweat. She recently was spotted switching out her nude heels for a comfortable pair of flats in the middle of her Australia tour. Queen knows first. Many new moms take to social media to announce the birth of their child. Others immediately call or text loved ones to inform them of the new family member. But you won't catch Meghan sending a text to mom after giving birth. One of the strictest rules for expectant royals is that the queen must always be informed of the birth first. If she is asleep while the baby is born, she mustn't be woken up to receive the news. Prince Harry is expected to make a highly confidential phone call to his grandmother to let her know his child arrived safely. Once the queen knows another heir to the throne has been born, then the rest of the world can know. A sign on an easel in Buckingham Palace announces the good news to the public, accompanied by a social media post as well. The baby is also welcomed with a multiple gun salute in multiple venues. Imagine if every baby got that kind of celebration. No gender reveals. Another popular trend when it comes to pregnancy is the gender reveal. Many parents-to-be throw parties and plan elaborate schemes to announce whether they'll be having a girl or a boy. Meghan won't be able to throw any such party as a royal. There will be no slicing of pink or blue fruitcake at the palace. These royals find out about the gender of their babies the old-fashioned way by checking once the baby is born. So even Meghan's pregnancy preparations will have to be gender neutral until the baby arrives. Multiple languages Education is very important for a modern royal. Aside from enrolling in the most exclusive schools in the country, royals are also tasked to learn other languages. The children of Prince William and Kate Middleton are learning Spanish, especially because their governess is from Spain. How fancy, we must say. Kate and William, the Queen and Prince Charles are also fluent in French. Meghan Markle is fluent in Argentinian, Spanish, and Prince Harry also dabbles in foreign languages like Arabic. We're definitely expecting a multilingual royal baby to be born of this couple special blanket. When presenting a newborn royal to the world for the first time, every little detail counts. A royal baby can't make its first appearance in any old blanket. In fact, the very blanket used to wrap a royal newborn is steeped in years-old tradition. The shawl brand G.H. Hurt & Son LTD has been making wrapping blankets for royal babies for 69 years. They started when the Queen and Philip welcomed Prince Charles back in 1948. Kate Middleton and Prince William's youngest son Louis was wrapped in an elegant white blanket. It was surely a warm way to be welcomed into the world. The luxury brand will definitely supply Meghan Markle's baby with a cozy blanket to be swaddled in for its first appearance. Formal Baby Attire Meghan Markle is known for her impeccable sense of style, which may ruffle some royal feathers. Going against fashion protocol is something Meghan is definitely guilty of, but will her future child do the same? Royal children can't run around in plain dorky jumpers or shirts with silly slogans on them. In fact, they have to be dressed in formal attire at all times. This usually means a pair of shorts and a collared or buttoned-down shirt for boys and dresses for girls. Did you know boys in the royal family aren't allowed to wear trousers until they're eight years old? We'll have to wait and see if Meghan will dress her little boy in full trousers. And with Meghan's fondness for suits, we might see a little royal girl wearing a pantsuit in the palace for the first time. Christening Gown Meghan knows how to get creative with clothing, while still appealing to the conservative folks in the royal family. But when it comes to her children's christening robe, there's only one option. The christening gown used for royal babies was originally made in 1841 for the baptism of Queen Victoria and Prince Albert's first child. This original gown was passed down and worn by 62 royal babies. Prince William was the last royal baby to wear the 163-year-old gown. By now, the Honiton lace gown is too fragile for use. Instead, a replica was commissioned by the Queen. Angela Kelly, senior dresser and personal assistant to the Queen, was in charge of producing the replica. Prince George, Princess Charlotte, and Prince Louis have worn this replica gown at their christenings. Meghan's new baby will be wearing the same dress as well, no exceptions. Grandparents up until recently, husbands had very little to do with the royal birth. They often weren't present during the birth, despite the fact that statesmen and midwives were. Nowadays, many royal fathers are there while their wives give birth. Will the invitation to witness the birth extend to grandparents as well? When Kate Middleton gave birth, her parents were called and swiftly arrived at the hospital. But that wasn't until the Queen was informed. Meghan might break this rule if she has her mother present when she gives birth. Why? Well, rumor has it she's moving in to help take care of the baby. Meghan's mom may have even known about about the baby before the queen did. Baby crew. 
When a royal falls pregnant, she has a whole crew to make sure the pregnancy and birth goes smoothly. Meghan is certainly not going through this pregnancy alone. Kate Middleton had a whole team of obstetricians, midwives, pediatricians, and anesthesiologists helping her out during her pregnancy and birth. They met every month to check up on Kate and the baby, ensuring everyone was healthy and safe. When Kate was in her last trimester, the baby crew was put on call in case of any emergency. Meghan will certainly get the same treatment. The team will be there to give her advice and support throughout her first pregnancy. Everyone dreams of becoming a royal, but it sure seems like a lot of work. What do you guys think? Can you handle all of these rules while pregnant? Let us know in the comments section below. Give this video a thumbs up while you're at it. Thanks for watching.